Yeah, resistance training, hypertrophy and training systems. So uh, this is something that I did while I was doing my strength and conditioning course. And um, I want to go a little bit deeper into it as part of uh, episode five of the tennis classroom. So I'm working through all these tennis resources, making these videos, hopefully inspiring some parents to make better decisions and expect more from their relationship with tennis. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I'm just going to skate over it because this is a this is a two hour lecture. But factors affecting hypertrophy. And number one is training. You've got to be doing around 10 to 12 hours of on, uh, sorry, off-court fitness training either in the gym or on-court training, but without, obviously, the racket. So speed, agility, that type of thing. But when we're talking about conditioning for tennis, we're really talking about programming the body to be the best it can be when in the competitive environment. Like a great example is Maria Sakari. So that, you know, section one. Section two is, you know, you th these, these have all got to have a relationship together. They've all got to work together in varying percentage, percentages. And nutrition and recovery, or definitely recovery, is vital. Um, I even thought of developing my own uh, tennis-specific protein drink. Um, but tennis recovery, you know, there's a plenty of science out there. I've read so much science, you know, review of research. You know, make it simple. What's your training, post and pre-training nutrition, sleep, active recovery, and what tools are you using? You know, that type of thing. How do you recharge your batteries? Yeah. That's why I always advise, if you want to be a singles champion, just play singles. Um, because there's just so much to do. And you just don't, the body just doesn't have enough time to recover doing the both. Especially when you might not have a good relationship with your, your nutrition. Sports nutrition is vital. Yeah, like I say again, keep it simple. Eating healthy, good sports nutrition keeps it the best, you know. I bet you if I showed this picture to many young players, they couldn't even name all the foods in it. Um, you know, but that's not wanting to create a negative picture because some kids do eat eat very well. And then the, the last one we need to look at is genetics. What are you, what is individual to you? What, you know, what 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 is your genetic makeup? Do you even know? And if you don't, find out. I said to one parent, what is your daughter's VO2 max? No idea. Yeah, you know, the, the, you got to know these things, you know, unless you're uh, like Usain Bolt, which is why I've put him in here, unless you're, you know, so physically dominant. I mean, the, Serene, the Venus and Serena, when they entered tennis, it must have been like giving the Victorians... Um, uh, you know, nuclear technology, it, it just would, it, it was just the reason why they dominated tennis, because they were just so far ahead, physically and mentally. Um, you know, this is individual to you, so my advice would be to pause it here and produce an extensive list of training variables that are individual to yourself. And then try and put it into this programming uh, pyramid that's here as part of the lecture. Um, how how can you train at that level enough to really see dividends? You know, you first of all, you got to develop a, a good level of speed endurance for tennis. Yeah, before you even get to the strength phase. Um, you know, the guidelines are very simple, really, but you need to be able to ex you know do the initial assessment to find out where do you train, low resistance, high, medium, moderate, what intensity, what's your one rep max, what's your frequency per muscle, what, um, when doing split routines, yeah, they've got to tie in with um, tournaments and stuff, they've got to tie in with, with your time on court. This is what I'm saying when I say you haven't got time for singles and doubles, unless you're doing the doubles, for active recovery, 
Now, if you're doing the doubles for active recovery, then you don't go all out in your doubles. Yeah. Um, you've got to build a program, exercises per muscle, volume, uh, frequency, prioritize, energy systems. Um, there's an, I'd add another one here, and that would be obviously time uh, on court agility work, free weight compound exercises, isolation exercises, machines and cables. And then this is where the expertise comes in, the selection of exercises and the training systems used. So yes, I've broke it down to to uh, about seven or eight here. But, you know, this is why I'm saying just because someone's an S&C coach doesn't mean they're necessarily a good one. You've got to be able to put together a program that that takes some of those things, yet yeah, not all of them or some of them, in order to build a champion. So when you're going on court, you are the best version you can be. You can beat these these other girls or other boys on the court. And, you know, it's not easy. It's hard work, which is why I always say start small and build. Don't try and go, right, we're going to take six months off now. We're going to work on fitness. It, it, it doesn't work like that. You, 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 you've it's small little steps and you build. And like, you know, this is a great diagram and I love this because it shows you about periodization. Most people don't even know what periodization is. In fact, I'd say the majority of people don't. And it's like I said, it'd be like giving Victorians uh, n nuclear technology. They, they, uh, but I've told parents all these things and they still don't want to listen because it's hard work. Everybody wants an easy fix. There's no such thing as an easy fix. And, and, when you really work it out, the three things you've got to be good at, strength, speed, and power in tennis. Yeah, speed, endurance, physical strength, and, a, and, and a, a level of power. And when you've got all three, you can develop that unbeatable mindset when you're on the court. Um, you know, the LTA are starting to build and get things together. But I still think things... Um, many programs are based on the old, what I would call a Jennifer Capriati model, who's still one of my favourite players, if not my favourite player of all time. People don't realise how much this girl changed tennis. At the age of, what was it, 14, 15, 16, she won um, Olympic gold at Barcelona 1992, uh, lost in the semi-final at the US Open, um, and then she's obviously won three Grand Slams, beating Martina Hingis twice and Kim Cloisters. So she's up there with real big tennis players, some of the best of all time. And, um, you know, that level of commitment that she sh showed shows that you need to stop making excuses and start working like, hard. And Don't sound even, like Stormzy. It's, it was, it's been a weird... It's these past few months, uh, knowing... Our, knowing as no, I, I promise, like, and even even it's it, it was it's been a bit of these past few months. Uh, knowing, I, no. So be confident in building your program. Be confident in sticking to your program. Show confidence in in being a young tennis player and knowing that the demands on the physical body will be tough. But if you make it simple, you can build on it. Both these. Both these women in his picture um, won Grand Slams at 17. They won them because they were in physical shape at that, at that age. And once you've got that young mindset to go out there and just hit your tennis and be confident about it and not think too much about it, hence why Emma Raducanu won the other day. Um, or like Angie Kerber, she won it later on. However, she was in supreme condition. So get yourself a good strength conditioning coach. Contact me via the channel and I'll help as much as you can. Make sure you like and subscribe. Adios.